Krishna 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 he Krishna 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 Hare Krishna. Welcome to Pariprasnina Sevaya. <clears throat> we begin with our invocation. Om Agyana Timirandasya Gananjana Shalakaya Takshuran Bilitam Jena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Manobhistam Stapitam Jena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadama Him Dadati Swapadantikam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristai Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Itinamine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Shunyavadi Paschacha De Satarine Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nitananda Sri Advaita Gradhara Sivasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare We want to kindly repeat after me the <coughs> short mantras Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Sri Sarabhyay Namaha Om Sri Sarabhyay Namaha Om Sri Sarabhyay Namaha Om Sri Sarabhyay Namaha Mukam Karoti Vatsalam Pangum Langayate Girim Yakripa Tamaham Bande Sri Karam Dinatadanam Yatkripa Tamaham Bande Sri Karam Dinatadanam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna <coughs> Welcome to our ongoing questions and answers on topics especially relating to Varnasrama Dharma uh, today we had uh, our weekly uh, meeting in regards to uh, the unfolding Varnasrama College online. Uh, we are uh, <clears throat> making some very, I would say, tangible progress in this uh, respect. <clears throat> and very, very soon we will be having uh, <clears throat> more specific information how <clears throat> either as a student or as a teacher one can become connected actually with this initiative. We are finding it very uh, stimulating. We have 10 devotees who are members of this uh, steering committee for the Varnasrama College online. And uh, two of them originally from Canada, one from Malaysia, and seven from Indonesia. I'm sorry, India. <clears throat> We're gradually adding uh, others <clears throat> as we are developing the framework for this, uh, <clears throat> we could say, uh, just like in the Indian culture, Vedic culture, we hear about Forest University. Yeah, because the, the teachers, traditionally in the Vedic culture, a teacher is a Brahmana. A Brahmana is a sadhu, saintly person. So, <clears throat> sadhus, very often would stay in the forest 
And therefore, one who had a des desire to learn would go to the forest. This is exactly what the mother of Dhruva Maharaj, she told him, you have to, I cannot help you. I'm just an ordinary, simple lady. I can help you. I cannot help you. God can help you. Where is God? <laughs> uh, Dhruva, small boy of five years of age. He, I heard he's in the forest somewhere. <laughs> because sadhus are in the, are in the forest. So, <clears throat> there's an expression that is called forest university. University now, nowadays are in the big cities, where they should not be. <laughs> More or less to establish an online university or a virtual university with the idea of, course, of <clears throat> as soon as possible as students take up these different courses and become trained and skilled in different projects as a matter of fact those who are listening you can uh, possibly tell friends or devotees whom you know, who are involved with some projects, with existing rural projects, existing farm communities. <clears throat> Our students, in the last of their studies, uh, can go and spend uh, one, two, or three weeks in such a setting. So in other words, this whole uh, endeavor or initiative which will involve more people as we uh, progress, is actually meant to, in a very practical way, help establish much, much, much needed gurukulas and much, much, much needed Varnasram colleges. <clears throat> so, um, within a very short uh, a few weeks, definitely before the end of the month, we will be having something very concrete uh, to offer to our uh, different devotees. And uh, <clears throat> this will, of course, only be, be possible by the mercy of our founder, Acharya Srila Prabhupada, and also the Vaishnavas as well, without the mercy of <clears throat> devotees. <clears throat> Without mercy of Guru and Krishna, we cannot be successful. <clears throat> in the last few days, just a little bit of information in the context of our um, epidemic, global epidemic, which is ongoing, we're happy to announce that uh, two of our foreign devotees who have served here at SSKBK <clears throat> are in the process of chartering or boarding a flight to return to their homeland. Of course, this is temporary homeland. Our real homeland is Krishna Loka. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but they are from uh, two different countries. One is from Switzerland, Bhakta Manuel, who spent some time here. Uh, <clears throat> he was also, in the last few years, spending uh, a good amount of time good amount of time at the Iskon Selam temple, uh, which he enjoyed very much. And uh, he's very fond of cows and simple living, uh, but he's eager to return to uh, Zurich, where uh, they have <clears throat> very attractive and active um, Harinam in the summertime. Uh, this may be uh, change a little bit this year or might be delayed a little bit due to uh, the situation uh, there that uh, <clears throat> uh, Bhakta Manuel will find out. And then we have another devotee uh, from California um, with origins actually in Mexico and uh, Bhakta Adin um, he's been on an extended tour <laughs> at the SSKVK he was only coming for one week. I think Krishna wanted him to spend at least one month because he'd been here about one month. <clears throat> and uh, he'd been doing very nice service, especially 
uh, for the cows, and I'm sure that uh, our Lal Gopal Prabhu will miss him. <laughs> uh, all the devotees here as well. <clears throat> Ongoing activities actually in different countries, just like in uh, Zurich, very close to Zurich. Uh, there is a nice uh, farm, Vaikunta Farm, actually. It is called Vaikunta Farm. Very nice couple are heading up this project. And as a matter of fact, Bhakta Manuel has been spending uh, some time, especially when it is harvest time and when they are selling some of the produce on, on the market. Um, <clears throat> so we want to encourage everyone to uh, become connected in some way or other with these uh, activities of Varnashrama Dharma in California. I don't want to go ahead of myself too much, but there's some very um, fantastic uh, developments in the making, and uh, we'll just wait a little bit uh, within, definitely by the month of May, something very concrete will be um, <clears throat> announced for the uh, uh, pleasure and also to give an opportunity for devotees to become connected or involved. We have one of the sweetest waters. We have very sweet water here at SSKBK. We're very fortunate. Um, and uh, <clears throat> This well that we have here, I came to know a few years back when I was staying for an extended period of time. <clears throat> we could say it is the family well for the whole area. It is the mother well, mother well. Because very often we are situated on a hill. Uh, Sayadri Sri Krishna Valatra is situated on a hill which is translated as Golden Hill. You know that? Golden Hill. We're sitting on gold. <laughs> yeah. So we are quite high compared to many other places. And very often during the dry season, we are now in the dry season. That's why it's a little hot. And the, this dry season will continue till month of uh, end of May or June when the rains will come. Already we've had one or two small showers, which is very nice. <clears throat> But at the peak of the dry season, this is a problem very often, and one of, one of the most crucial aspects in a community, in a rural community, the well. So many of the wells dry up at the peak of the summer season. And many people, I saw with my own eyes, they come to our well, which still has water. And something very interesting, I came to know just a few weeks ago, one of the reasons why this water in this well, and maybe other similar wells, is sweet, there is a technology. There is a technology whereby at the bottom of the well, one puts some kind of wood or trees and the water, by being in contact with this tree, I forget which tree actually, it's just like, you know, to plow. There's a particular kind of tree. You just don't use any tree. You use a tree that is not very heavy, but that is very strong at the same time. Uh, and one can easily carry, we see farmers walking actually with the bulls carrying their plow. Yeah. So traditionally they would put this, uh, maybe a, one fresh log underneath so that as the water comes in the well, stays in the well, uh, it is uh, mixing with that tree and some kind of uh, a nice uh, sweet <clears throat> smell or taste rather. Uh, taste is coming out. So that's why Krishna explains in the Bhagavad Gita that I am the taste of water. <laughs> so <clears throat> we cannot experience that everywhere. <laughs> but 
if we are fortunate to have the kind of well that we have here at SSKBK, whenever we drink water, then we can easily, more easily remember Krishna. Hare Krishna, yes. So we will take a few minutes to read one section from our speaking about Varnasrama. I want to remind everyone as well that the uh, ISKCON Daiva Varnasrama Ministry here in India is offering a complimentary copy of this book, this hardbound, actually, the complimentary copy is for the hard, hardbound, not softbound. Hardbound copy because it is meant to be placed in your library and it is meant to be a, a book of reference, if not the book of reference on all kinds of topics related to Varnasrama Dharma as very wonderfully presented and explained by His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada. Today we are still in New Taliban, which is in the U.S., in New Orleans. This is a room conversation with devotees on the 1st of August, 1975. And some of the topics covered in this chapter are farm community as training institution. Farm community as training institution. Srila Prabhupada also wanted that our temples be training institutions as well. Second theme, using milk and milk products. When our focus is on the land and cows, then naturally milk will be there. So how to utilize the milk and how to make different milk products. A third theme, machines, employment, and unemployment. The more we use machines, the more we create unemployment. And the less we use machines, uh, the more we create employment. So this is very important subject matter. Then another theme, duties of the Varnas. Another, Krishna's Vrindavan versus modern city. I mean, these are points that Prabhupada is making. <clears throat> and then the last theme here, our Varnasrama mission. What is it? If it is not possible to save everyone, save as many as possible. It won't be possible to save everyone. But we should endeavor to save the maximum number of people. <coughs> mm. <coughs> so, here properly is speaking about milk and milk products. Ghee should be prepared uh, Ghee should be prepared for different preparations. The Indian village, simply by keeping cows, just like Nanda Maharaj was keeping cows. Similarly, there are many villages. So the system is they got a big pan, and whatever milk is collected, they put into that pan. It is being warmed. So they drink, the whole family members, they drink milk whenever they like. <laughs> so whatever milk remains at night they have to convert it into yogurt the next day they use milk and yogurt also as he likes then after converting the milk into yogurt still it remains it is stocked so when there is sufficient yogurt they churn it and then butter comes out so they take the butter and the water separated from the butter that is called whey. Uh, so instead of dal, they use this whey for chapati. Yeah. It is very healthy and tasty. 
And then the butter, they turn into ghee. So where is the loss? So Prabhupada is making the point. Uh, so many different ways that milk can be utilized. <clears throat> from milk stage to yogurt, yogurt to old yogurt, from old yogurt to butter and then water that way. Yes. Not a single drop of milk will be wasted if you know how to do it. <clears throat> and you can take as much milk as possible. So if you start in the cities, nice restaurants, so ghee can be sold there. Yes. <clears throat> And then Prabhupada speaks about the duty of Vaishyas. Actually, it is the duty of the Vaishyas <clears throat> for cultivating the fields. But Prabhupada is telling, actually, it is the duty of the Vaishyas, but the Shudras can help every, everyone as helpers. The Shudras will help the Brahmanas, the Kshatriyas, as well as the Vaishyas. Those who have no brain, simply they can carry out orders, order, uh, they are in the category of Shudra. And those who have got brain, they can act as Brahmana, Kshatriya, or Vaishya. They have got good brain to take the initiative. First class brain, they should be engaged in studying Shastras writing books, and the worship of the deity. Lecturing. Uh, this is Brahmana. They haven't got to work as Kshatriya, as Vaishya. They are simply intellectuals. This is Brahmana, with good character. <clears throat> Distributing books, a devotee is asking. Yes, and the distribution book can be done by the Vaishya. Trade, it is trade. Krishi Gorakshavani Jam, Krishi agriculture, giving protection to cows and distributing or trading. If you have got enough grains, you can trade, make money. If you have got enough vegetables, you can trade. That is the business of Vaisha. <clears throat> so Vaisha does not require any university degree. Nobody requires university degree. <laughs> Prabhupada is telling. Nobody requires university degree. That is false thing. And Brahmana should be very highly learned scholar. So the Brahmanas will give advice to the Kshatriyas how to rule. And the Kshatriyas will levy tax. And Vaishyas will produce food. Then the society will be perfect. Uh, so like this... Uh, Various topics uh, are covered. Yes. We will go to next chapter, which will be mm, <coughs> in Mauritius, a morning walk in Mauritius. And we'll keep that for tomorrow. Let us take some questions from our devotees. Today we are on our 21st session and looking at question number 63. And this is from the devotee I was mentioning a little earlier, Bhakta Manuel, who is on his way to Switzerland. <clears throat> Mm. Maharaj, I read the introduction by Hare Krishna Devidasi. So he's been reading the book. He got a copy actually when he was here uh, <clears throat> speaking about Varnasrama. Now my question, how can we perform our work as an offering to the Supreme Lord? Then he goes on to explain a little bit. Our goal now is to do our material Svadharma and spiritual svadharma in a balanced way. This is very good uh, understanding. 
<clears throat> so then the question here in this context, what is or what happens when someone is only doing or following the spiritual duties and who has forsaken his material occupations to engage in the devotional service of the Lord may sometimes fall down while in an immature stage. Yet, there is no danger of his being unsuccessful. On the other hand, a non engaged in occupational duties does not gain anything. Because in the purport it is written, written, it is enjoined in the scriptures that one can relinquish all such duties and surrender unto the service of the Lord. <clears throat> yes. So one needs to learn how to balance these two levels of responsibilities between material swadharma and spiritual swadharma. <clears throat> it doesn't mean um, that uh, here the point that Srila Prabhupada is making even uh, <clears throat> if someone has uh, forsaken his material occupations to engage in the devotional service of the Lord, uh, he still he is a gainer, even if he happens to fall down, because he will have begun his path on his way back home, back to Godhead, by having taken up Christian consciousness. <clears throat> so if someone is nicely performing his material activities in any of these categories, but is not connected with Krishna, then there is no benefit. There is, on the other hand, uh, for one who takes to spiritual life, uh, even though he may not always be successful. <clears throat> By taking to spiritual life, it does not mean that we uh, abandon different duties and responsibilities. We learn to perform these duties and responsibilities uh, or dovetail these activities in the service of Krishna. <clears throat> but it is a fact, and there's a verse in the Bhagavatam also, that... <clears throat> And the Shastra explains, anyone who is born in any country, anywhere, by taking birth, we have so many duties and obligations. We have obligations to our parents. We have obligations to our forefathers. We have ob obligations to teachers. We have obligations to uh, <clears throat> different demigods who supply all kinds of ingredients. But when one takes to spiritual life and directly serves Krishna, then those du duties or obligations become secondary. Uh, in other words, when we serve Krishna, who is the source of all the demigods, who sustains all living entities, by serving him, as the example is given, we are giving water to the root of the tree, the root of the plant. So therefore, the entire, the entire tree becomes uh, nourished. Uh, <clears throat> so we have to learn this art of uh, working within the established system of Varna and Asrama <clears throat> while performing those activities uh, primarily for the pleasure and satisfaction of Krishna. That's what it means by balancing the spiritual svadharma and the material svadharma. The material svadharma <clears throat> is to always remain focused on what is our primary responsibility, means to remember that we are eternal servants of Krishna and to engage in uh, devotional activities, means whatever activity we engage in, we 
offer that to Krishna. <clears throat> Simultaneously, we accept the system created by Krishna of this natural division of Varna and Asrama. And under the good guidance of seniors, of senior Vaishnavas, under the guidance of uh, Guru, we take up some particular uh, post or position or responsibility. Uh, <clears throat> so like this, uh, we, made sure Prabhupada was making. In other words, uh, <clears throat> sometimes in devotional, when we uh, especially focus on our spiritual svadharma, we may at times give less importance or neglect the material svadharma. Uh, we may not be always su successful in our material svadharma, even if we're not always materially successful. And to our uh, benefit, to, uh, <clears throat> to be engaged in our uh, spiritual svadharma. Uh, so best is to... Um, um, this is actually the instruction that is given also in the Shastra. Normally, one's uh, position within the system of Varna and Asrama is determined by elders, by more spiritually advanced, by brahmanas actually, in the village. And therefore, uh, <clears throat> most of us have not had this opportunity of being guided from an early age. And therefore, we are facing uh, <clears throat> difficulties, uh, not having received this kind of training, not having received this kind of education. And of course, that is one of the major or main reasons why Srila Prabhupada wanted that we have these Varnasrama colleges to give, especially to those, and which is the majority of us, those who did not get this opportunity of receiving this training at an early age, college, they can take up this training and they can learn about the scientific nature and arrangement of Varna and Asma. So let us go to uh, another question here. Mm. <clears throat> this is question number uh, 64, mm. and she is very grateful to uh, to both Rameshwar Prabhu for helping to organize these recordings, and also to Rasa Mandal Prabhu, who is receiving all kinds of questions. Here's a very short question: Isn't castrating a bull cruel? Does the scriptures support it? So this question does come up. Uh, and <clears throat> I have heard different explanations regarding castration. Uh, there are injunctions whereby it is prohibited. And there are references to that effect as well. And we have a number of devotees within our ISKCON society who follow this uh, and who uphold this particular principle. On the other hand, we also have devotees who uh, recognizing or understanding that we have less than a diet less than an ideal situation uh, where <clears throat> we don't have that kind of um, natural Vedic environment where uh, <clears throat> just like in family planning when the samskaras are performed then there will be good progeny 
So in a similar way, uh, for, uh, <clears throat> for cows and bulls, <clears throat> there's a whole science, actually, in, uh, <clears throat> in, in bringing forth a good progeny uh, of, for, for cows and, and, and bulls as well. It's a very involved science. So because, unfortunately, this is not followed, so there are many bulls who are often totally uncontrollable. And therefore, within our ISKCON society, uh, we have this uh, ministry for cow protection and agriculture. Uh, the, the previous uh, minister, Balabhadra Prabhu, actually, who was minister for many years, for the Cow Protection and uh, Agriculture Ministry. <clears throat> he has uh, many issues of a newsletter that covers many interesting aspects, actually, of farming and cow protection and the importance of bull, ox training, etc. So in some of these new newsletters, anyone can actually... Uh, read these new letters. They are available on the internet. Uh, you can just Google. Uh, he had established, and it's still functioning today, an or organization called International Society. We'll give him a plug here. <laughs> International Society for Cow Protection. ISCOWP. ISCON is International Society for Krishna Consciousness. So, the society registered some 20 years ago, actually, and uh, has come out with very wonderful newsletters, all very practical. Uh, Balabhadra Prabhu has uh, given his life, actually, for cow protection for bulls. And so you can read the process, which will be the least uh, painful to uh, the young bull. Or may not be painful. <clears throat> I don't know the, the details, but uh, this uh, matter is discussed. So <clears throat> these two views are there, and and uh, <clears throat> up to each individual actually by reading the uh, <clears throat> we could say arguments presented on both sides. This water is so nice. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> there are arguments on both sides, and uh, I'm not authority on castration of bulls or bulls in general, although I understand their great uh, importance and not only importance, but absolute necessity. Just like we were mentioning uh, yesterday, how this story came out with a very wonderful PowerPoint uh, presentation entitled, The Global Importance of Cow Protection. So, um, devotees who are interested in this subject matter regarding uh, communication, the Ministry for Cow Protection. We have a global ministry protection here in India, and one of the devotees is uh, <clears throat> Damodar Dulal Prabhu. He's one of the co uh, ministers along with uh, Vishnu Nan. Vishnu Nan Prabhu is in Ahmedabad, based in Ahmedabad, uh, very much familiar with cows. <clears throat> and uh, Damodar Dulal Prabhu, close to uh, uh, Mumbai in Talasari area. <clears throat> and then there is uh, Dr. Sri who is also very, he's a veterinarian, him and his wife. Uh, I'm losing count now. Last time I think he had three Goshalas, uh, quite a few hundred. And I heard that all of his bulls are not castrated. 
Um, so one can approach or contact or correspond with these devotees and hear explanation and then after hearing both sides then one can uh, maybe understand more uh, clearly, more fully what are the uh, implications. I would say that ideally bulls should not be castrated uh, <clears throat> and there might be uh, different reasons why in the context in which we are in today which is uh, very far removed from the original natural, more natural, more simple Vedic context uh, then there may be uh, a cause uh, for taking such action um, so that uh, that is the inf basic information I, c I can convey on this point. Let us see here. Yeah, we have time for one more question. Mm. And we're getting many questions from SSKBK, <laughs> uh, where we are here actually, because nowadays we are like so many people in India, in confinement. So I, I never get to see the devotees. Is Rameshwar Prabhu, who's arranging this broadcast every day and serving prasadam. Since I see devotees walking around doing different service, and uh, devotees are keeping engaged in different ways. This one tree has... Kokam. 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 Yeah, kokam. Uh, fruit. Chris, he's been asking different questions, very intelligent questions. Uh, and here is another one. Mm. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandavat Pranam, please accept my humble obeisances, all glorious to Srila Prabhupada. My question is that, are all the four Varnas supposed to take all the ashramas? Yeah, it's a valid question. Uh, according to one's varna, that's why Prabhupada said, Herman, at an early age, the varna of an individual. First is varna, then is ashram. So if one is identified and actually is by nature a brahmana, then all of the four ashrams are open to him. He can uh, take to brahmachari life in Gurukula, uh, he can take to householder life, and then naturally, if he takes to householder life, he should take to Vanaprastha life. And being a Brahmana, after Vanaprastha, then he should take sannyas. So it means that actually Brahmanas should become sannyasis. They are the only Varna that is meant to become a sannyasi. Of course, one can remain brahmachari whole life also. If we look at the second varna, <clears throat> uh, kshatriya, kshatriya varna, kshatriya varna, three of the ashrams are open to them. A kshatriya should also receive brahmachari training in Gurukula. Secondly, a kshatriya generally will enter householder life or marry unless one is Bhishmadev. Bhishmadev chose not to marry. So, this is very rare, but it means that a Kshatriya can also remain a Brahmachari whole life. But generally, a Kshatriya will enter householder life, and then, entering householder life, he is expected to take Vanaprastha. This is what Yudhisthira Maharaj and all the Pandavas when the news came of Krishna's departure, isn't it? When, that, when uh, <coughs> Arjuna returned from Dwarka and conveyed the news of the departure of Lord Krishna from this material world, then Yudhisthira Maharaj was the first to head north, to head towards the Himalayas, and he was followed by all of his brothers, as well as Draupadi and uh, Kuntidevi. 
So that is the second varna. First varna, brahmana, four asrams are open. Second varna, three asrams are open. The third varna, vaisha. Vaisha, the two asrams, brahmasari training and householder life. Brahmana, four asrams. Kshatriya, three asrams. Vaisha, two asram. And for Shudra, there is only one asram. For Shudra, there is Grihastha ashram. No Gurukul training necessary. But there is, because the culture is so nicely arranged, that through different cultural activities, uh, through different spiritual activities, through different festivals, which were by basically uh, connected with spirituality, through different uh, ways and because of the culture, the mentality, the qualification of the leaders in society, all the members of a community, all the members of a village, that means all those who are Shudras, who were not in the category of Brahmana, Kshatriya and Vaisha, they would receive this education in this way. You see. But a Shudra, therefore, does not uh, receive formal training in Gurukula, nor is he expected to take Vanaprastha or Sannyas. Uh, <clears throat> of course, uh, <clears throat> what determines whether one is uh, a Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra, this will be uh, uh, established and determined by uh, those who are knowledgeable about this uh, science, that means generally those who are brahmanas, and more easily, more naturally, uh, this will be known or this will come out, this will be manifest when we live in a more natural and original environment, which is that of village life, you see. <clears throat> so that's one of many reasons why it is so important and why uh, because this is not followed why there is so much of confusion as to what is actually my varna what is meant people are asking when somebody asks what is my, my varna <coughs> then uh, that means what is meant to be my actual occupation there is a lot of mixture in our modern setup, in modern day society, because of so many um, irregularities and uh, so much of deviation from what is meant. So <clears throat> the sooner we can establish a more natural lifestyle, the more we can reestablish the agrarian kind of lifestyle, then gradually, gradually, these things more easily will fall into place. And the longer we delay, the longer we put off reestablishing what Krishna and what our Acharyas uh, have explained to come back to our original natural way of living, both spiritually and materially, then this kind of confusion as to what, as to who we are and what we should do will remain, isn't it? Uh, <clears throat> so hopefully that helps to address this uh, question. And uh, we just have a few minutes so we can try to uh, close our session here by um, <coughs> encouraging the devotees to continue their, um, <clears throat> first of all, practice of devotional service of Krishna consciousness um, <clears throat> and uh, uh, remain strong in our different uh, <clears throat> vows that we have taken as devotees. Continue, you know, 
we are over three weeks, going on the fourth, fourth week right now here in India <coughs> of this shutdown. So one may tend to be a little relaxed. Uh, we should not uh, <coughs> be relaxed. We should continue to be very vig vigilant, uh, keep this uh, social distancing, and uh, <coughs> even when the next major announcement will be made, uh, <coughs> even if there is some kind of relaxation that will be announced, it should be done very gradually, and uh, uh, <coughs> in this way, uh, we should continue to be to be cautious. So, once again, I want to thank the devotees for sending in questions. Please continue to do that. And uh, we can all together uh, chant, or recite rather, as we have been doing at the close of our session, the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Jai Sri Rapaupada ki, Jai Samasa Gaur Bhakta Vrinda ki, Gaur Kriminande, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.